Let's pray. Dear Lord, I say thank you for the day that you brought us together. I want to ask you to be with us, guide us, provide for us, take care of us. In Jesus' name we pray. So our class today is going to be talking about project design. And this is the first part we are going to start having our coursework. Many people have been asking me, is there coursework, is there assignment? But this is going to be the start of everything right now. We have looked in class, we have looked at the project part. We have looked at the project cycle. We have looked at the planning. All of these have been leading us to something that we really needed to know. All these topics have been leading us to a project. We have defined a project. We have known the characteristics of a project. We have known what it means to have a project. We went further and said that a project, because they're saying it is a temporary endeavor undertaken to create a unique product. Therefore, that temporariness has got a pattern, has got a, a way, a road to follow. And that was our project cycle that is started from identification, identification, and takes you through monitoring, takes you up to evaluation, and brings you back to an identification. So it becomes a cycle that whatever reports that you have here gives you a base for another identification or another project. And that is not enough. After knowing that, we realized that the second stage after identification here, after identification of a project, we realize that the next part is what? Planning or design. As I have planned and I'm designing, what happens? So last week, we looked at planning, which we realized planning is the process of determining what to do and how it will be done in the future in an organized way. So that the objectives of a community, a group, a society are all achieved. So when we have all this coming into place, it makes, it makes things easier to understand what we are going through. So the planning part makes all of us understand that planning is a process. Now, we went further and understood that planning is a process. And that one leads us now to the design. What do we design? So today's lecture is all about project design. Project design. What therefore can I say is a project design? What therefore can I say is a project design? I can say a project design is a collaborative. It is a collaborative and systematic it is a collaborative and systematic identification and prioritization identification and prioritization is a systematic and collaborative identification and prioritization of problems and opportunities of problems and opportunities so when i talk about design we need to identify we are saying a project design is the collaborative and systematic identification collaborative and systematic identification and prioritization and what are we identifying and what are we prioritizing the problems and opportunities you'll agree with me that in everything that we do every day what is my problem is the other person's opportunity what is my problem is the other person's opportunity and this makes life what it is today that whatever we talk about development, we talk about, whatever we talk about growth, when we have a problem, whenever there's a problem, to us social scientists, we see an opportunity. Have you ever realized that when you have to, somebody has a problem that you have, 
I we realize when you're having a problem, somebody makes it an opportunity. I don't know about you people, but in places like Kenya, whenever there's a funeral, you see somebody's bringing a booth for Photoshop. They make a very big image of the person that they let, and then they make it so many, they do Photoshop. So whatever photo you want. So you come and stand here, and, and the person, the, the lady is standing here with you in a photo. So they do the photos, and then they, they do Photoshop according to what you want. They even have calendars. Like, if you die today, your birthday becomes part of the dates in the calendar as a holiday. Number two, the day you are dead. So you realize at the end of the day, there is a calendar, a one-page calendar with all the days, with all the holidays, but one of the marked holidays is one. One is the day you die, the day you die is marked, the day you are buried is marked, and your birthday. So all these, when they are marked here, they make... Somebody's on, eh? Somebody's on. Yes, someone is on. Let him read. Because I'm also getting a feedback from this side. So when they do that, they make it, and people buy these calendars. But it is a project. The other family is suffering of death, but these people are enjoying that when somebody is dead, and they're going to sell their calendars. So in this course of today, we look at a project design. They're saying it is the collaborative and systematic identification and prioritization of what? Of problems and opportunities. And this, when we have them, we now therefore plan for solution. When we have all of this therefore, we plan for solutions. What next that you have about all this? And that is the lecture of today. Now, for us to start this in, in proper ways, we want to say that the first thing we need to do is we need to understand in project design what is situation analysis. What is situation analysis? In our lecture of project of planning, we talked about it. In our lecture of planning, we talked about it. We are talking about situation analysis. What is a situation analysis? This is the first thing you want to look at. Just imagine making a plan without knowing your current needs or the needs of the target population. You are going to go to the community and they are going to take you, make a plan. We need this plan. How therefore do you go through this? You want to do a situation analysis and in this situation analysis you don't have a plan. How do you work? So you realize, that's why we say, that the first, the first stage in the planning cycle is called situation analysis. Therefore, what is situation analysis? This is the first step in making a project plan. And it assesses the current situation. It answers the question, one, where am I in relation to where I want to be? And this makes us to collect enough information regarding our present, our present condition. Let us consider this. What is it that is entailed in the situation analysis? For us to talk about situation analysis, a situation analysis must consider one area characteristics. Which area are we going to do the study? Which area are you planning for? And that's why we are saying in social sciences, our lab is the whole world. And so, if our lab is the whole world, the project that I have implemented in Bugema University main campus, I cannot implement it the same way in 
Bugema University Kampala campus. Why? Because they have different area characteristics. Many campus is a big land. In many campus there is this good environment. In many campus there is all those things. But when I come to Kampala campus, they have less than five acres of land. When I come to Arua campus, they have less than five acres of land. When I come to Vana campus, they have less than five area, five acres of land. And if you look at all this, in many campus they are about rural. When I go to Kampala campus, they're in the city. When I go to Mana campus, they're in the town. When I go to Arawa campus, they're in a town. When I go to Kasese campus, they're in a town. So the area characteristics matters a lot. So with this, we talk about the area characteristics. We are talking about the region. Where is it? Which district is it? Which community? So I can talk about the district where it is. I can talk about the community where it is. And then I can talk about the uniqueness. Of this place. What is so peculiar about this place? Bukema University Main Campus is situated in the rurals of Zimbabwe, of Lueros district. Unlike Kampala, which is at the city, unlike Bale, which is in a town, unlike Kasese, which is also in a town, different regions, different districts, and all that. When I've looked at area characteristics in the situation analysis, the next component of a situation analysis is the population characteristics. Who are these people? What are they doing? These people that you are going to talk about, the project that you are bringing for them, who are they? So in terms of understanding this, you need to know what is the target population? Who are you targeting? Describe for us. Are they students? Are they community members? Are they youths? Are they what? So when you talk about this, you also need to tell us what are their day-to-day -day activities? What do they do daily? Students, we expect them to go to class. The border border youths, we expect them to have that. And then lastly, what is so unique also about them? What is so unique about them? You can have them that these are senior six dropouts. You can have them that, like in Bugema University, like I said, what is unique about Bugema University main campus? We have students from 25 countries. That's very unique. In the eight schools that we have. And when they come here, we are all treated as a family. I mean, that makes things unique in Bugema University. The third character, the third component of a situation analysis is the services available. What services are available? As you talk about situation analysis, you also need to describe to us the services available. What are these services that are available here? Can you identify them? Like in Bukema University, we know that we have the services of education, we have the services of accommodation and talk about main campus, we have the services of internet, we have the health services, and I can say of ETC. There's so many services. And these services can be provided by the university or the community members. Security, all these are services that are there in Bugema University main campus. Transport, you name it, criteria like way hospitality, food and hospitality. Somebody can even bring spiritual. ETC. So you mention all these services in your, in your situation analysis. And lastly, the last part of a situation analysis is, as you think of mentioning all this, you need to end with current needs. What are the needs of the people? You have told us that these people are in Bugema University main campus, that district, that community, and that is what is unique about them. 
And as they are there, they are the students, the target population. They, they go to class, that is the main thing they do. What is so unique about them? They are from 25 countries. You come here and then tell us, in all these things that they do, these are the following services that are available at Bugema University Main Campus. Education, accommodation, internet, health, security, transport, food and hospitality, and even spiritual services, counseling. There are so many services. And then now, you, you have told us what is the committee all about. Therefore, what is missing that the people are looking for? Then from here, that's when you need to involve people. What is it that is missing here? I can give you, in Bugema University, many people are talking about, one, they talk about internet issues, two, power, three, they talk about classrooms, meaning they are there, but they're not conducive for them according to their views. We have so many accommodation, some good hostels are very far. There is no proper transport. Some talk about security. Just as you are in a society, you know that everyone, every day, we have issues with societies. Security has always been an issue, whether you provide it or you don't provide it. But you realize at the end of the day, everybody has got a question. So having all this, I can therefore give you a sample of a situation analysis. As you can see on the screen, I can say Bukema University Main Campus is situated 32 kilometers north of Kampala along Gayaza Zero Road. I want you to mark the area characteristics here. Bukema University Main Campus is situated 32 kilometers north of Kampala, along Gayaza Zirobo Road, in Luero District, Kamira Parish. I'm done. Situated 32 kilometers along Gayaza Zirobo Road, in Luero District, 32 kilometers from Kampala, in Kamira Parish. That is Bogema University Main Campus. Now, let's continue. What is the population characteristics? I can say, the population of BU is from 25 countries in Africa, and they come in, in with different cultures, behaviors. The population of BU is from 25 countries, and they are students. They come from 25 countries with different cultures and different characteristics and behaviors population characteristics. I've gone further and said that currently BU offers services ranging from security, accommodation, health, education, transport, and spiritual services. I've mentioned that. Though, the last part, though the, 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 these services do exist in Bugema University, it has been noted that internet, security, accommodation, water, classrooms, need some improvement. So at the end of the day, I have stated my situation analysis. And this can be done in one small, simple paragraph. Just imagine you are going to meet the president of Uganda and you have been given three minutes or two minutes to talk to the president. You want to explain to the president the problem me, I will come and tell Mr. President, His Excellency Yuweri Kaguta Museveni, Sir, I'm from Bugema University main campus. It is 32 kilometers north of Kampala along the Road. Road. We have a population of 25, a population of students from 25 African countries, meaning we are cosmopolitan, we have different cultures and different what? Behaviors. Currently, we have services that are being done in Bugema industry. We have security, we have accommodation, we have all this. But these services need improvement. We are only requesting that you help us. We need internet, we need security, we need classrooms, and all these accommodations. These are the problems we have. Sir, have a good day. I'm done. Somebody feels that you planned yourself. 
Now, this is first part of us. Up to now, we have done a situation analysis. But this situation analysis, what are you doing it for? This situation analysis, what are you doing it for? Then, as we talk about the project design, we are saying we must understand the situation. We must do the situation analysis. And after doing the situation analysis, allow me to take you through. Therefore, what is the problem? You realize at the end here, you, you ended with the needs of the community, of the people. When you do the situation analysis, when you do the situation analysis, you ended with the needs of the people. If that is the need, it is a long line of needs. You have identified them. You identified the issues about internet in Bugema University, the issues about accommodation, the issues about security, etc. Allow me to have those three in that corner. Now, when I have all this, therefore, the next step in the project design is we call problem analysis. How therefore do you analyze? these problems. Remember, you don't have all these resources to implement this. You don't have all the money to bring internet. You don't have all the money to build the best hostels that the students want. You don't have all the money to improve on the security system that everybody's talking about. But what therefore do you do? You come and analyze this problem. Now, we can say problem analysis is used to collect information. Problem analysis is used to collect information. And this information collected is done during the situation analysis or the needs assessment. It is used to eliminate problems of less importance and understanding the underlying causes of the main problem. So when you do this, I want you to understand that there are four stages that we're going to go through in the problem analysis. And stage one is stage one is problem identification. How do you identify the problem? You have got a list of problems from the situation analysis. Therefore, how do you identify a problem? I've given you a definition of a problem there that a problem is a condition or a set of conditions that affect people negatively. That's why it is a problem. It affects people negatively. When we are happy, this person is an annoyed. Why is he happy? Eh? He's happy because he has passed. He's happy because he has got this. He's happy because they have sent pocket money. That is it. And you realize, me who doesn't have, I'm affected negatively. So with all this, for us to identify a problem, for us to identify a problem, there must be a criteria that we need to follow. For us to identify a problem, there must be a criteria that you need to follow. Number one criteria. That for us to talk about this is a problem, we look at the degree at which solving it. The degree at which resolving this problem will result into a fundamental change. If you solve this problem, can it result into a fundamental change? And fundamental change here, we talk about change that can be felt with an impact. So when you talk about this is a problem, look at it that if I resolve this problem, can it result in a fundamental change? Then that is a problem. Number two, the significance and the scope of the problem. How important is the problem? Significance and the scope of the problem. If you look at the problem, can a problem be important? Yes. Right now, all of us have got issues. I can give you the example of Uganda, or an example of Africa, or an example of the world. HIV AIDS has been an issue. You'll agree with me in Uganda, HIV AIDS was the song. And most of us knew that HIV AIDS kill and HIV AIDS blah, 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 HIV AIDS that. But when COVID came, HIV AIDS was put in the docket or in the cupboard, it is what? COVID-19. Why? Because it was important. Because it was significant. And why were we looking at this? Because of its scope. COVID-19 did not only attack us in Uganda. COVID-19 did not only attack us in East Africa.
COVID-19 did not only attack us in Africa. COVID-19 did not only attack us in the globe, but it attacked us, but it attacked the global world. So if you look at it, its scope is very big. It is not only a Ugandan affair, it is not only East African affair, it is not only Commonwealth affair, it is a global affair. So because of that, you realize it is a problem that needed a criteria. It is a problem that needed to be solved. Number three, criteria. Identification by the affected community. Can the people in the community identify? Identification by the affected community. Sometimes we go to the community, ask the social scientists. Sometimes we reach these people and then we are the same same people saying so many nonsense. We design projects for them, we say this is a problem, but they don't identify themselves with a the problem. They do not. Not until Uganda identified itself with the problem of COVID-19. Then you realize Uganda, we have gone the first stage, the first wave of COVID and the second wave of COVID. There are some countries that read different waves that we cannot even know. And that's why you see when the Ugandan government identified itself with this problem, and the Ugandans identified themselves with this problem, shops had to be closed in Kampala, not for two days, not for months. Schools had to be closed, not for one month, not for one year, but for over two years. Universities, all these things are challenges. Why? Because we identified ourselves with them. We organize ourselves how to move on. And that's why you see universities could continue to study. A nursery kid could not continue to study. Because there are different characteristics. And we identified ourselves with the problem. Another criteria is the organization, organization programming principles. The programming principles of the organization. For an example, programming principles of an organization. If you look at SDA for an example, the SDAs do not take alcohol, the SDAs do not take pork. As a student of Ugema University, being project planning and management, and in this class of project planning and management, if we are to design a project for Ugema or for our class, believe me, even if we wanted to do a bar where people can come and drink, we cannot come and do it in Ugema University. Why? Because of the organization programming principle. They say not to alcohol, not to tobacco, not to so many things, not to eating pork, not to eating beef. All this, some of the organization programming principles will also matter for you in identifying a problem. You cannot say that the problem here is this when some of the organization principles are so tough. Another criteria is the comparative advantage. Comparative advantage. In some places, you realize somebody starts something, but you don't even have the you don't even have the ability to do it. So when I look at this, you are saying the organization comparative advantage, ability to address the problem. For an example, Bugema University cannot come and address the problem of COVID-19 in Uganda. Bugema University can only address the problem of COVID-19 in Bugema. That is our scope. That is our area. I cannot say that our strategies can be done with this. You have heard of these universities that have brought the, 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 the medications for COVID-19. You have heard the wrangles that have come. Barara University has developed covid -X. This guy says that covid is mine is not for Barara University. Guli University case says that we have also developed something to do with COVID-19. These people know we are in the testing. What, what, don't implement it to people. The other day, Bill Gates came and said that if every country
country can do what the Australian government has done, then they are ready to fight the pandemic. He's not telling us what Australian government has done, but he's telling people, people, the case study for managing pandemics is in Australia. But these are countries that lost people on the streets. These are countries that people died. And lastly, the interest of the donors. You might have a problem. You might have a problem, but the donors. You don't have the money. You don't have the resources. But this is the problem A. For an example, if you want to go to Plan International, you are taking a problem to Plan International. Your problem must be related to education. That is it. You will never take anything there like building a classroom, B building, a building what? A church. You cannot take a project there like constructing a road. You cannot take a problem there like security. It has to be something to do with education and it is education. They support education and that is it. That is their interest. If you are going to take a project to the government of Uganda, they are the donors. The government of Uganda will tell you, security, leave it for the government. You cannot, even if you are the district commissioner, even if you are the LC5 of the area, you cannot talk about improving the security. And then you say that you want to employ your own policemen, you want to employ your own army. The government of Uganda will not agree with you. Because those are the interests of the government. It is the government to provide security of its people. Because if every district Every LC5 is going to start employing his own police, his own army, then we are going to have rebels in the country. Ladies and gentlemen, the stage two, this leads us to problem prioritization. After doing this, we go to problem prioritization. How therefore then do you prioritize a problem? There are so many things that we can do, but we can do problem prioritization by using what we call pair wise ranking matrix. A pair wise ranking matrix is a tool that helps us to pair to prioritize our problems two at a time. And this tool helps us in a way that each problem is written in a sequential way and each problem in the matrix should then be compared with each other one pair we say that the winner should always be recorded in a cell where the column meet and the two are being compared the team should repeat the process for each unique the matrix cells are shaded out when they represent intersection of the same in from the row. So this gives us the pairwise ranking matrix. Now, for us here, in stage one steam, which is problem identification that ends with problem prioritization, we have to prioritize a problem. And the only way to prioritize this problem is to use what we call pairwise ranking matrix and we are saying this is a thing that helps us compare two items at a time and I'll give you an example there but I want to explain it like if you look at this our problems in Bugema are those three you can have so many but I'm limited myself to three now it starts with if we have three problems then we need to have three rows and three columns. One, two, three. Those are three columns. We have the first row, the second row, and the third row. Now, this makes a matrix because it multiplies each cell. Three by three will give you nine cells. These are the cells. One, two, three, four, five, Six, seven, eight, nine. So if I have only three, these are three problems, then I need how many cells? Nine cells. 
where the rows and the columns meet. That box, we call it a cell. So if you have five problems, then you will be five by five, which gives us 25 cells. If you have 10 problems, then you will be 10 by 10, which will give you 100 cells. So on top of this, we add an extra row and an extra column. This extra row and extra column, we use them for naming purposes. Extra row and column are used for naming or labeling. So that you don't mess up. We are saying that you must be systematic as possible. Now, with this, the first problem of Bugama University students was internet. It takes the first, the first one here is what also you put the first one in the column. That's why we say that you must label. The second one is accommodation. Second one here is accommodation. Third one is security. Let's say because there's a problem in security. The third one here is insecurity. That's why we have to label. But in the notes, we also say that where the problem meets itself, we shed it. So if you look at this, internet and internet is the same. Accommodation and accommodation meets here the same. Security and security meets here the same. And that's why we shed the cells that will not give us a comparison of two items at a time. A comparison of two items at a time. Now, in shaving them off, therefore, we remain with one, two, three, four, five, six cells. Now, this is why we need you now to work together. We are saying compare two items at a time between internet and <coughs> accommodation. Between internet and accommodation, what could be the main issue? What could be the main issue? Then somebody will tell me accommodation. Between internet and insecurity, people will just say, ah, I can do without internet, but my, my security is important. So you realize the answer, the, the, the priority there will be security. Between accommodation and internet, between accommodation and internet, the answer is, people will say, no, let's work on our accommodation. I can always come and internet, have internet at the university, but I can, my accommodation must be good. Between accommodation and insecurity, between accommodation and insecurity, somebody will say, ah, it is insecurity, it is a priority, because even when I'm staying, I need security. And then the person comes and says, between insecurity and internet, which one is the priority? It is in security. And then the person comes and says, between insecurity and accommodation, insecurity and accommodation, which one is the primary problem? Then it is what? Insecurity. Those who are smart, you'll have seen something that has been repeating itself. We have the upper side, and then we have the downer side. So if you take this, if it is on a paper, and then you fold it to this, then you realize this, this mark here will give you this is the upper side and this is the downer side. And this will tell you what really is happening. Here it was accommodation, accommodation, insecurity, Insecurity, insecurity. What does this therapy mean? Tell you the things. We had internet, we had accommodation, we had insecurity. What is the priority problem of Bugema Investment Campus students? We count. Insecurity, in internet, zero options. We come to. A, 
pardon. Pardon. Hello. You are talking and you have a friend of yours who is also online ne near you. So one of you to mute and then you ask the question. Okay. So at the end of the day, we have accommodation having one, two. So accommodation has got two options. And then in security we have one, two, three, and four. Zero, four. So with this, you realize the most priority problem is insecurity. Can you type the question if you want, if it is bringing echo for you? Just type the question. I will see it. So you realize this gives you the project, the pairwise ranking matrix. It gives me that at the end of the day, if I want to work on a project, then it is what? Insecurity of Bougain University main campus. This is biased. This is biased because of class. This is biased. But in the community, we go and engage everybody. In the community, we go and engage everyone in this. And as you engage them, they get to understand what is happening. So, so far, we are saying, so far up to where we are, we started by saying, our lecture today was on project design. Our lecture today is on project project design. And in project design, we have looked at a project design, we have looked at the definition, and in looking at the definition, we have also looked at for us to do a project design, we need to start with what we call situation analysis. And in the situation analysis, we have looked at the four main components of the situation analysis. The area characteristics, the population characteristics, the current services available, and then the needs of the people. Now, when we have looked at that, we are going further and say that until this, you have ended with the needs of the people. A, B, C, needs of the people. Then you come and do what we call problem analysis. And in this problem analysis, we are saying the problem analysis is where you collect data. You are collecting this information. And in this problem analysis, we are saying it has got four stages. Stage one is the problem identification. In this problem identification, we have looked at the criteria for saying this is a core problem. And then we have looked at how to prioritize the problem. And in this prioritizing the problem, we are saying we can only prioritize this problem using what? Pair-wise ranking matrix. That's where we are right now. So I need to continue to stage two, stage three, and stage four. Now, the stage two that we have the stage two that we have after this, that you have already known the problem, you have prioritized the problem now. At stage one of problem analysis, that is problem identification, we have known the criteria for selecting a core problem. We have come to prioritize a problem through pairwise ranking matrix. When you do pairwise ranking matrix, it gives you one priority. And in our priority right now in this class is what? insecurity. That's what we are prioritized in our problem pairwise ranking matrix. Now it takes me to stage two. Stage two. And stage two is what? Identify the underlying causes. What are the underlying causes? What are the causes of this problem? What are the causes of insecurity? Somebody can say one is 
laziness. Somebody can say this is caused by peer pressure. Somebody can say this is caused by poor light, poor lighting. It is it. And then step three tells me or I need to identify the underlying consequences. What are these underlying consequences if insecurity is not dealt with in Bugema University? What can be the problem consequences? Number one, I can have death. Number one, we can have death cases. And then we can have dropout of students from BU. And mainly, it will lead to closure of the university. That's it. So you realize that this thing is generic. Just imagine, in insecurity, just a simple thing, insecurity, what are the causes? Laziness, peer pressure, poor lighting. We can have so many reasons. These are just mine. You can have so many reasons that leads to, that causes what? Insecurity in your area. Now, what can be the possible causes, uh, possible consequences? We can have death because people are being beaten. We cannot drop out of students from BU simply because they fear. We cannot close up the university when students start dropping. We can even have somebody who tell me that because of the insecurity, we have the poor performance of students. Because you are in fear always. You cannot come to the library. You cannot do this. People are being beaten even daytime. Things like that. And that leads me to stage four. And stage four, identify the condition of the problem. What is the condition of the problem? Now, this is always one of the hardest parts when it comes to analysis that conditions are identified as direct causes of the problem and frequently exist because of a certain human behavior. So in this condition, they exist because of certain human behavior. What are some of the human behaviors that can make us be insecure? I can give you one that you don't expect, pride. You're too proud. You want to show everybody that you are. Everything obvious is a class. You are that. No, I cannot meet those people. This is not my class. Class. This is how people go. And therefore, people even say, okay, fine. He, she ha he or she has so much. You walk, you are walking with the money. You are ever buying things. Me, I've not even bought something today. You, you are cooking meat in your place. You are doing this. You have this. You have a TV. You have what, what, what. There are some things that are only on us as human behavior. We are lazy. We don't care. Some of these things are the causes of what? Are the causes of this problem. Now, this leads me to what we call a problem tree. So, with this, we have identified that we have in this map, we have stage two, which was underlying causes. Stage three, which was the underlying consequences. And stage four, which is more of the conditions. So up to there, we move to the next tool that's going to help us. That is the problem three. Now, for us up to this point, you already have the problem itself. You have identified the causes of the problem. You have identified the, the consequences of the problem. You have identified the conditions, the human behaviors that leads to the problem. Therefore, 
How therefore can you explain this? You can only explain this using what you call problem tree analysis. You can only explain that by using a problem tree. What therefore is a problem tree for us? This is a tool for building relationship. This is a tool for building relationship. We want to know how is this problem related to the causes and related to the consequences and related to the conditions. Therefore, we use what we call problem tree analysis. And this tool helps us to build relationship. In this tool, we realize that we need to identify the direct causes. And this direct causes gives us the real meaning of the problem. And we need also to identify the human behaviors that are determined primarily by people's knowledge. Some people are just lazy. Some people are just, I don't care. Some people are just too proud. And people's knowledge, attitudes, and beliefs that they have. Now, problem tree can have this kind of uh, an hierarchy that it will always have consequences. It will always have consequences at the end here, at the topmost. But these consequences come from a problem here. In this case, it is what? Insecurity. That's our problem. But what are the causes of this problem? What are the causes of this problem? So in this, we can have in this we can have the problem. In our case, it is insecurity. What are the causes of this problem? What are the causes of this problem? And it is a tree because it is growing big. We have the conditions which is at broad level. The condition itself, which is broad. We can still have the condition, which is broad. Meaning, there might be more than one cause of this problem. There might be three, there might be four main causes of this problem. That's why we are making it the conditions that are broad. And then we have conditions that are not specific to this problem alone. This problem alone, we can have conditions that are not specific to this problem. I can have another problem which is still broad here. And then I can also have a problem that is specific. It depends on how many problems you can have. You can identify as the causes of the problem. Now, this problem is insecurity. What are the broad causes? A, B. What are the specific causes? C, D. Now, this is where the maths come in now. From that specific causes, you realize that it is more of one behavior. It is more of the behavior. And at the same time, it is more of, apart from behavior, it can be conditions, systemic conditions. Systemic conditions. Now, this leads us to an argument that as you look at it, there is a systemic condition that comes in. Now, these behaviors here, the behaviors here, the behaviors that we have here as a cause to the specific there are always things to do with attitude and knowledge. There are always to do with attitude. There are things to do with attitude and knowledge. They deal with attitude and knowledge. But also the other side of systemic, they deal with capacities and even policies. They are more capacity and even policy. Like for example, during COVID-19, we had a policy of no traveling. 
It was put. But even if you had the capacity to move, there was a policy. If you had the capacity to move, it's either your child is sick, you are going to the hospital, you can drive your car, but you still need permission from the police. You are either taking somebody to the hospital, they are either going to give birth, pregnant women, and all of that, you realize even Bonapodas were allowed to carry pregnant women or the sick to hospital. But not anybody, because all that. And all these are the general social, cultural, and political factors. When you look at all these here, they are the general social, cultural, and political factors that affect us in our life. Now, with somebody going up to this, therefore somebody can now come and say, I can write a problem statement. I can write a problem statement. And to take you back to our mark of today, that as the stage four, we write a problem three, analysis. Now, from this problem three analysis, I can do a sketch for you. Like for an example, we can have our problem as, we can have our problem as, we can have our problem, we can have our problem that we have identified today in class as insecurity. And then we ask ourselves, what are the causes of insecurity in Bugema? I can use A, B, C. Those are the three main causes of insecurity. What are the specific causes of A? What are the specific causes of B? What are the specific causes of C? I want to make them unique that none have each other. So I have C, B, E, A. And then I have G, H, I. And then I have J, K, L. All these are specific causes of, C, of those. And then I can ask myself, what are the specific causes of D? What are the specific causes of E? What are the specific causes of F? What are the specific causes of G, H, I, J, K, L? So all this you realize I have level 1, level 2, level 3. In the level 1, when the cause is down, I have A, B, C. Those are the main causes of insecurity. What are the causes of A? Like, like let's say, a one cause of, of insecurity in Bugema is what? Laziness. One cause of insecurity in Bugema is laziness. Now, if laziness is a cause of insecurity in Bugema, what are the causes of laziness? What are the causes of laziness? Now, if you get one of the causes, like the causes of laziness, now, if you get that specific cause, what is the cause of that specific cause. And then I have the consequences. What are the consequences of insecurity? I have death, we have poor performance, we have what? Dropouts. And this will lead to a major problem. And that is what? A major consequence. And that is what? Closure of the university. So after you have identified all this, then you go to problem statement. Because now you know your problem is what? Insecurity. The problem is insecurity. Can you state this problem? Can you state this problem? Problem statement. Can you state this problem? Now, in the problem statement, 
all problem statements that I know have certain components that we need to look at. They have certain components that we need to look at. That in terms of writing a problem statement, in terms of writing a problem statement, you can use words like poor, insufficient, inadequate, low, high. There are so many negative words that you can use. But if for you to write a problem statement, for you to write a problem statement, you need to know one, what is the problem? What is the problem? The problem here is what? Insecurity. In BU main problems. That's the problem. So when you're writing a problem statement, go direct to the problem. Don't go around the bush. Direct go, it is the problem. The next question you need to ask yourself, what you need to consider writing a problem, what is the size of the problem? What is the size of the problem? You need to explain. The sizes here can be explained in ratios. The sizes here can be explained in percentages. They can be explained in figures. So somebody can say majority of the students. If I say majority, that is 75%. If I say few, that is 25%. I can give all this. So you say majority of the students suffer from insecurity issues. Their properties are stolen, things like that. Now, after explaining the size, you come and explain what are the causes of the problem. You already have them in the problem tree. Number three, you can talk about the causes of the problem. You really have them in the problem tree. So it's just a matter of bringing them. And then number four, you talk about the consequences of the problem. You really have them in the problem tree. And number five, you talk about, you finalize by saying, what can be done about this problem? What can be done about this problem? What can be done about this problem. In short, you are asking yourself, what are you going to do? So I can say, this project, this project, therefore, seeks to improve security in Bugema University main campus. This project, therefore, seeks to improve security in Bugema University main campus. Ladies and gentlemen, that marks the end of our lecture today. But remember, you have a coursework. Now, the coursework starts from here. In this topic, I told you we are going to start doing our coursework. So today, as you go through your notes, I want you to start writing a situation analysis. Make sure it is in one paragraph and it explains all those. Now, after doing the situation analysis, you will come and prioritize the problem for me. You will come and prioritize the problem pairwise, using a pairwise ranking matrix. After prioritizing a problem using pairwise ranking matrix, you will come and draw a problem tree. You will come and draw a problem tree. From the problem, you have prioritized. And after drawing the problem tree from the problem you have prioritized, you will come and finish for me with a problem statement. And the problem statement must have all the five components of the topic. Have a good day, ladies and gentlemen. Any question?